Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Thinking in Scale, Level 4 Scale Models. You can see since there's a whiteboard in the box that we'll be doing some modeling. After watching this video, you should be able to create a time scale model of the events that take place in a game of mousetrap or a spatial scale model of the inner planets. I'm going to start by showing you a time scale model of the processes and the creation of a sandwich and then I'll give you a chance to work on your own spatial model of an American road trip. Um, so the first thing you want to do before you create a spatial model or a time model is you want to define what system are we investigating. Um, I've been using the word, word scale quite a bit. Scale is going to have a new definition as we go through this video. In the past it's just been the relative scale. Is it big? Is it small? Um, in this case what we're going to use is the definition as a graduated range of values. What does that mean? Up to this point a scale has been like small or big, just remembering our scale block, but now we're going to have to say what is the actual value and then also we're going to put graduations along it so you can see what does that actually mean and we'll look at both time and spatial models. Um, but let's start with our first one which is going to be the creation of a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. The first thing I would want to know is what are the events that took place in the formation of this sandwich? You can see that we've got bread, we've got peanut butter, we got jelly, and then bread was added and then the whole thing was cut in half. And so we're going to create a um, time scale model of this creation of the sandwich, but first let me show you what an actual scale is. And so as we talk about a scale to this point it's been just a relative scale, but now we want to define what is that scale so we can use it. So imagine we've got this little block here. Imagine this block is an inch long. So it is around an inch long. And so this would be one inch and this would be two inches and this would be three inches and this would be four inches and we could even put ones on the side. And so what we now have is a scale model. And so what does that mean? I could draw a line through here, put arrows on it, and we could say these represent inches. So this is zero inches on this side. This would be one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches. So what we're starting to get are these graduations. And so if you've ever seen a number line or the axes when we're graphing something, you've seen a scale model. It's just a representation of something we see in the real world. So to get this out of the way, I'm going to use, since I'll be writing on it, I'm just going to use a simple simpler version of that and I'll put it right in the middle of my modeling box. And now we're going to go back to the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So thankfully somebody recorded what was going on as this sandwich was created. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down all the big steps that I see uh, in the creation of this sandwich. So the big processes that I see as we start to look at this would be the peanut butter is added, then the jelly, then the bread is added, and then it's cut. And so what this is not a scale model. This is not a time scale model yet. It just shows me the order in which they take place, but it doesn't tell me how much time did it spend in each of these. And so what we'll do is watch this video and what I'll do is write down the time when we see each of those things occur. So the bread's being added or excuse me, the peanut butter is being added. This is kind of sped up. So the peanut butter is on at around 22 seconds. Now the jelly is being added. When does that finish? Looks like it's done around 42 seconds. The bread's on at 46 seconds. So let me write that down. So 46 seconds for the bread. And then the whole thing's done. Thankfully it's sitting here at 56 seconds. So 56 seconds that whole thing's going to be done. So what I now have are I have some quantities. So I have some quantities of time. At what time did this finish? And so now the last thing that I have to do is I have to map this onto my time scale model which is down here. So first thing I would do is say well it had to start at zero so we're going to put uh, zero here. I also want to define what is this scale model showing. So I could show this is showing showing time. 
I also want to make sure that I'm showing what it's measured in, what are the units. So we could say zero time would be here. Since this is around 56, I could say this is going to be around 60 seconds. That makes this around 30 seconds. And so now I can start putting these events in. So the whole thing started at zero. At 22 seconds, which is going to be, I don't know, we'd say somewhere around here. The peanut butter was completed, so we could say this whole thing represents peanut butter time from 0 to 22. Jelly's done at 42 seconds, so we could call this jelly time in here. In the next part, at 46 seconds, this thing's cut, so this is where it's cut. And then the whole thing finishes at 56, and so this would be, or excuse me, this is backwards here. So this would be the bread being added, rather, and then it's cut. And so what this shows me now is a time scale. It has all the hallmarks of a scale. It's got graduations along it. It shows the time, so it has the unit. And it also shows me the relative time each of these processes took place. We could say peanut butter was done at 22 seconds, but the whole process existed during this time. So I'm going to take a moment and clean this up, and then I'm going to have you try to do a spatial model and show me your thinking, and then we'll kind of see how our thinkings match up. Okay, for the next example, we have the American road trip. It's a road trip that starts in Los Angeles, then goes to Las Vegas, Miami, and New York. The first thing that we always want to do is define the system. So the system we're trying to model is this American road trip. The first thing that should jump out right away is since this has miles on it, not time, we're not really doing a time scale, rather we're doing a spatial scale. So just like you and I right now existing in different points on the planet, these cities are all in different locations. And so what I'd like to have you do is create a spatial scale model. It should have units, it should have what we're measuring. And so take a second to create your scale model using the thinking slides down below, pause the video, and then when you're done, come back and we'll see if our scale models match up. Okay, so the first thing I would probably do is I would determine what are going to be all of the stop points along our trip. So I would say, let's just write down the cities in order. So the first thing I've done is written down all the locations that we're going to go to as we're taking our trip. The next step is for me to start writing, okay, how far are those apart? So Los Angeles, we could say Los Angeles is where we start, so we could say that's zero miles. Next we have to represent Las Vegas, which is 250 miles away. The next, since it's saying that this is 2,500 miles apart, it's not 2,500, but it's 2,750, 2,750 miles. And then the last bit, bit is going to be 1,250 miles, so that makes it easy. That's going to be a total of 4,000 miles. So I put that here. Okay, so now the next step is for me to create a spatial scale model. So what am I measuring here? I should write that first. The first thing I'm measuring is distance. So this is going to be how far they are all apart, and we could say miles is the unit that we're me measuring it in. We could say zero is here, and then to make it convenient, we could say 4,000 is going to be over here. That puts 2,000 in the middle, 1,000 here, and 3,000 here. So you can see that I've got the graduations now, and those are an equal space out. Now I need to just create my spatial model. So we could say LA, or Los Angeles, is right here at zero. Um, where is Las Vegas? Las Vegas is right here. So it's 250 miles away. So we could say Las Vegas is very close. If we go to Miami, where is that? 2,750, so that would be kind of right about here. So that would be Miami. And then 4,000 is going to be New York. 
So what do we have now? We have a, a spatial scale model. It shows me that it's really close. The Los Angeles and Las Vegas are close to each other. Miami is quite a bit farther away. It might take us more time to get there, but again, this is not a time scale. It's just showing us where they are all spatially. Um, it also shows me America is really, really big. So that is a spatial scale. What I'd love to have you do now that you've learned how to do it is look at the video and the thinking slides below and try to create one for the steps of mousetrap or even do some science. Where are all of these located, uh, these inner planets, and how far are they from the sun? It gives us a sense of scale and it really gives us a sense of exactly how far are those things spaced out. So like all models, it's super helpful in science, um, but that's level four. It is on scale models and I hope that was helpful.